All right. So we have with us today, and we are delighted to welcome Larry Brink, who is the chief instructor of the, let me get it right, the Society of American Military Swordsmanship. Okay, I get the words mixed up half the time, but we got it right today. And they're going to talk about Colonel Thomas Stevens, who was a businessman here in Dodgeville, but prior to that, he was with the Queen's Dragoons in England and became an expert swordsman, which Larry will get into that in more detail. And then his quartermaster, Robert J. Rank, is right over here, and they will do an exhibition of some of the techniques that Stevens taught. And you have to tell me who this young man is right here. Yeah. Brent Posey. Brent Posey, okay, and he's going to be out there with Larry when they do the demo. So I will turn it over to Larry and we're good to go. And thank you all for coming today to Local History Day. Thank you very much. And thank you very much for the warm welcome. Uh, a little bit about our club. We are a uh, historical fencing uh, club out of, uh, out of Newport Ritchie, Florida. Um, yeah, so we've we come a long way. Uh, I am a native Wisconsinite. Uh, I was originally born in Marinette, a little while north of here. So it is kind of nice coming back to my home state every now and then, especially to give a demonstration on one of the most noteworthy uh, Wisconsinites, uh, Colonel Thomas Stevens. Now, if you've read uh, in the newspapers, they did a really good spot on Colonel Thomas Stevens, a lot of good information in there. I'm also writing a book uh, on him, which I hope to get published in the next couple of years, which will have even more information. Uh, but what I'm going to try and do is uh, maybe fill in some uh, additional anecdotes that maybe didn't make the newspaper or that will definitely make my book uh, when it's finally published. So if you read the article, you know that uh, Colonel Thomas Stevens uh, was originally uh, from England, uh, Devonshire, England to be exact, uh, a little town called Tavistock, which is kind of in the, uh, the Cornish Welsh area. So it's kind of a, a Welsh Cornish stock. Um, he was born the son of a miner. Uh, mining family uh, in uh, 1815 and uh, one day uh, they were out uh, playing he's out playing with his one of his friends uh, kind of imitating uh, combat from the royal guards and a couple of officers uh, spot the two boys playing and they saw some military potential in them so they approached the young boys and uh, started a conversation and next thing you know young thomas is now in a military academy about 24 25 years old now a uh, young man, he storms home to his father and says, let's move to America where a man can be a man. And so that was the final straw. So in 1840, uh, with his younger brother Richard, he born a steamer in Liverpool and decided to come to America where he first settled in the mining town of Pottsville, Pennsylvania. So uh, this is going to be 1840. They got there, the first couple of years are rather rough for Thomas and Richard. You know, they're living in relative poverty at the time, uh, trying to make their way. Um, but Stevens having military training, and with the fledgling United States, they didn't have, you know, they're still kind of developing, you know, their military, didn't have a lot of programs. And so they relied on the expertise of, of immigrants, you know, especially with military experience to help train their militias and their armies. So, so he writes this book in 1843, and then uh, later on, um, as you read in the paper, he eventually moves to Wisconsin. And uh, in Wisconsin, he, he settles in Dodgeville. And uh, he also uh, married a young lady that he was courting since getting here. He was also made Inspector General of the Wisconsin uh, Active Militia as well. So he still was active, using, utilizing his military experience as well to help out the Wisconsin Militia. But then something happened in April of 1861. Uh, the Civil War broke out. So the governor at the time, Alexander Randall, very much a staunch abolitionist, uh, was very dead set on meeting President Lincoln's uh, call to arms and uh, basically recruited regiments. Now, initially they only requested one regiment, but Alexander Randall went above and beyond and recruited many, many Wisconsin regiments. Uh, so he heard about Thomas Stevens, uh, about his skills and ability, so he called him into his office in Madison one day and had a little conversation. And it went something like this. So uh, Governor Randall asked Stevens, I hear you, you know something about handling a sword? To which Stevens replied, yeah, I do, you know, something, I know something. And uh, the governor asked him, are you busy? And uh, Stevens says, not very. You want a job? 
And Stephen was like, well, there's someone I can do. So the governor said, I want to find someone that can teach lieutenants, captains, majors, colonels how to use their swords. Can you do that? And Stephen replied, I think so. The governor looked at him and said, no, that won't do. Can you do it? And Stephen's like, yes, sir. He's like, okay. What I want you to do is go down, see the colonel at Camp Randall, and arrange for a course of instruction. And I want you to put those green officers through a course of sprouts they will never forget. And that's exactly what he did. So at a rate of $5 a day, he went down to Camp Randall, and he was the sword master of all, all the recruits. So if anyone's any Civil War buffs here, um, I'll just name a couple, of, a couple of the more noteworthy regiments. You've probably heard of the 2nd Wisconsin Infantry, the 5th Wisconsin Infantry, the 6th Wisconsin Infantry. Well, they're kind of known. Uh, they ended up being organized under um, Rufus King's Iron Brigade. So if you know anything about the Iron Brigade, they were very, the Black Hats. They're a very fierce group uh, of Wisconsinites that fought in the Civil War. They fought in the Battle of Gettysburg. Um, and so all those officers were trained by Thomas Stevens. And he talks about the importance of physical training for the, for the U.S. soldier. Because at that point, you know, they just conscripted people, handed them a rifle, did some drills, and send them off. Physical training and physical fitness wasn't a big thing. So Colonel Stevens was also one of the more early proponents of, of, of physical training uh, for the U.S. military. And so what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to go ahead and demonstrate the, uh, I'm going to start off demonstrating Colonel Stevens' uh, extension motions, kind of give you an idea of what those movements look like. And a lot of those movements kind of help, you know, they expand the chest. And actually, I'm going to hold up to my quartermaster because he's actually going to kind of read from the book uh, pretty much what it talks about. And I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate uh, as he reads it. Colonel Stephen, <clears throat> first extension motion. <clears throat> the following systematic exercise gave energy and precision to muscular movements, flexibility, and prompt obedience to the will. They will give the body the pleasing and graceful appearance of firmness, steadiness, and dexterity in the positions and use of the limbs with the sword in order to secure an easy, upright position of body and <clears throat> require supplements of limbs with, free, with general freedom and flexibility of the muscles, various extension movements must be practiced. The following figures are given that the pupil may train himself in the absence of a teacher. Side note, when you do these exercises repeatedly, you really feel the muscles and tension in your sword arm, which really, they look a, bit, a little bit different, but they really do affect the physical fitness of that particular uh, arm. Now we're gonna to go to the balance practice and extension motions. In other words, this demonstrates the positions a swordsman would use on the ground when they are uh, preparing to meet an adversary. By moving the leg back, that moves the leg out from uh, a position where your enemy or your adversary can actually cut your leg. This demonstrates a lunge. This this flexes his body so that um, his body would be ready to respond quickly to move backwards or forwards into a lunge. All right, so that is the basic warm up that all recruits would do. So um, do we have anybody here that would like to go ahead and participate and maybe try out some of these exercises? Okay, so what I'm gonna do is 
Uh, my students are gonna go ahead and demonstrate what you're all gonna do first. I'll talk through, and then once you see the demonstration, I'm gonna call up anybody that wants to participate. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna call up anyone that wants to participate, and we're gonna go ahead and do them all together. Okay? You now the modern army pretty much has also a position called carry saver, which the arm is straight. So anyone with military service has done sword manual knows what I'm talking about. So, in, but in the old days, this is the position of slope swords is which they would start. They would also start in something called first position. So first position, uh, what they're gonna do is they're gonna turn their left toe out. And then their right toe is gonna be facing their adversary. So this is gonna form a line between the two that's called a directing line, all right? which is formed from the rear heel of both heels to the front toe of the first foot to the toe of the adversary's foot to the heel. Now at this point, they're gonna get the command prove distance. So we wanna make sure they're at the proper distance. So at prove distance, they're gonna extend their sword arms edge to the right until the tips are pointing the guard and are immediately gonna come back to the carry. Now from this point, they're going to assume an engaging guard. So what we're gonna go ahead and do they, uh, figure two shows the outside guard, but there are actually three engaging guards, but for sake of time, we'll just talk about the outside guard, and we're gonna stick to this chart here. Uh, unless you wanna be here <laughs> afterwards, we can show you some additional stuff. But, okay, so the command for that is gonna be outside guard engage. So at the command engage, they're gonna sink down. It's gonna be two counts. They're gonna sink down first, and then they're gonna go ahead and assume the outside guard. All right, and then the reason this is called an outside guard is this the body is divided in two so anything from this side anything from outside this arm is called the outside line and you have the inside line so the outside guard protects your outside line so if you divide the body into four quadrants the sword can only defend one quadrant of the body at a time all right so this obviously defends the high outside line so all your odd number of cuts are going to come this way your even number of cuts are going to come this way so your five is gonna come this way, and your six is gonna come this way, and then finally you have the cut seven, which is the vertical cut to the head. Now, when we train the soldiers, the person uh, basically doing the exercise is just gonna say one. Okay, so one soldier is going to attack with a cut one. The other soldier is going to defend with a parry. So at this point, I'm gonna have uh, Brent go through all the cuts, and then uh, Bob is gonna do you feel good with all the parries? Doing all the parries? Okay, so he's going to do the corresponding parry. So the corresponding numbering parry, uh, numbered parry. So when he does a cut one, instead of saying, okay, parry cart, I'm just, he's just going to do a guard one. So that way, when I call the number one, he's going to cut one, he's going to parry cart. But he's going to assume basically the guard, okay? So go ahead, uh, assume the outside guard position. All right, Brent, when you're ready, go ahead, cut one. And then he goes to a guard one. All right, now they're on an inside guard. Now I'm gonna say two. So he's gonna disengage over, he's gonna cut two. Now he parries a two. When I say three, he's gonna disengage around, cut, come undercut, and try to cut for his wrist. So this is gonna come back around, and he's going to do a guard three, just like that. One, two, three. So ascending cut, there you go, four. There you go, five. So horizontal cut to the chest, and then you're preparing it this way, good. Six, and seven. All right, good. So what we do then, I just start counting out random numbers, okay? So I'll do one, three, five, seven, two, six, and we just keep going faster. So if you're imagining now rows of recruits coming down here, and I'm just calling out numbers. So who would like to go ahead and fall in on one of these swords and go ahead and we'll just try to do this by the numbers. Right. So now there are four positions in this style of fencing or stances. You know, anyone that has martial arts, you know there are different stances that you assume. So this particular uh, system has four. You're only really fighting with three uh, in reality. So first position is a preliminary position before achieving a fighting stance. And so that is done. So you're at the position of attention right now at carry swords. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna turn your left foot out and then place your right foot the heel, forming a 90 degree angle, all right? So we're talking about the, so remember we talked about the directing line. So you're gonna wanna place yourself to where your toes are in line with your adversary. 
Okay, so go ahead and assume an outside guard, and we'll go around and we'll, we'll fix your positions. So go ahead, outside guard, sink down, and then step out with your right foot. Good. And then now, you want to go ahead and, I'm sorry, outside guard. <laughs> there we go. All right, good. So you can see that your outside line, this side is protected. Your outside is protected. To, uh, 417 West Walnut Street. The original house was built in 1855 by Colonel Thomas Stevens. And I'm going to let the experts tell you more about him. This is Larry Brink, who is the instructor and um, main teacher. This is Bob Rank. He's the quartermaster as part of the uh, martial arts program for the Society of American Military Swordsmanship. There you go. It's a mouthful. And this is Brent, a grandson that willingly came along to help with this event. And we're very happy to have all three of them here today. So I'll turn it over. Hi, as, you, as um, Sue said, I'm, uh, my name's Bob. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the family members uh, for allowing us to come here and to um, to promote, help promote uh, this home, this beautiful home. Uh, it's no simple matter to maintain a home that was built in 1855. And it takes a lot of love and dedication to do that. And we just like to thank the family first and foremost. Uh, the second uh, issue that we have is how did Larry and my grandson and I actually come forward to this position. And as it turns out, about two years ago, we arrived on the property trying to take photographs of Thomas Stevens' home. And Tyler was here, just got home from work, and he came out clearly wondering why we were taking pictures of his home. And he came out and he was a gracious host. Um, I'm not sure in Florida whether, whether people would have been that gracious. That's where we're from. But uh, he showed us around. He told us the history of the home. He told us what the improvements that had been made over the years. He showed us their, the, the future of their home where they were adding elements to the roof line. And I could tell right away that he really cared about the history, the tradition of the community, as well as his part that he's playing with the home. So, so that's what brings us here today. Um, Larry suggested that we could do a sword demonstration, a sword demonstration, a demonstration of Colonel Thomas Stevens' techniques that evolved over time. He was trained in England, and Larry's going to tell you about this. But uh, this will be the first time that Colonel Thomas Stevens' sword exercises will be done on this property, probably uh, since 1865. So um, I'm going to turn it over to Larry. He knows a lot more about this than I do. And um, we're going to begin. And what they're going to do is they're going to adjust until the tips touch the guard. All right? And then once they do it, they're automatically going to go right back to slope first. All right. From here, we're going to go ahead and assume uh, an on guard position. OK? So in this case, we're going to use the outside guard. So this man will be outside guard engaged. So it's going to shoot counts, they're going to sink down, and they're going to engage and do an outside guard. So in their outside guard, edges are going to be touching, okay? So this part, if he tries to cut, basically this is his side, his outside line, both outside lines are covered. You want to be able to, to be able to turn your wrist all the way without moving your elbow. That's what this stretch does, okay? And then from here, we open the palms, extend down, and we turn the back of our wrist in front like this. Now we're going to bring up. Now we come down to position of attention. Now from here, we're gonna push, we're gonna rotate back. We're gonna to try to push our, stretch our arms, our shoulders all the way back, a nice big wide circle over our head. And we're going to grasp our hands with our thumbs, right above them. Now we're gonna keep our head back perfectly straight. And we're gonna bend at the waist. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna stretch our back and hands. We're gonna exhale, all the way down. Try to touch your toes if you can. Right. Hold there for a second, feel that stretch. And then inhale, you hold that up. Rotate the shoulders all the way back. Very nice. 
Unfortunately, in the military, there's no such thing as lefties. You're all trained with the right <laughs> hand. Now, you know what? If you're in the middle of a battle, there are no drill instructors around since they can't fight with you. You can switch it then. But when you're doing a drill with everyone, you gotta go right. Okay? All right. Another thing in the cavalry, you know, is everyone uses the sword in the right hand, right or left. But you know what? You have to shoot your revolver to the left. Have you ever seen the old Civil War or the cavalry movie where you, why is a guy wearing his pistol backwards? on his right side. Shouldn't it be this way? No. Remember how you always see it kind of? You watch some of the old movies and you see the, the gun backwards? That's because you draw the sword, you fight with the sword with your right hand, you draw the pistol with your left. And so in the battle, your offhand weapon is your revolver. And so you're shooting with your pistol and you're fighting with your pistol. So every next time you see a movie like that, that's why you wear it backwards. So if you're a right-handed shooter, if I'm a right-handed swordsman, yeah, Guess what? I'm going to learn to shoot lefty. So you kind of learn to be ambidextrous. So it doesn't really matter what hand you are, you're going to be using one of those weapons in a non preferred hand. All right, so this is what we already guard to. Ready? One. Good. And now you're going to come back to yeah. a guard. Let's do it That's again. That's guard one. Good. Her cut's coming All right. this way. So now, yeah, so now when you attack, you, the attackers, you're going to want to lunge in. Lunge in. Okay? Yeah, right. Okay, defend. Ready? <laughs> Five. Very good. Good. Very good. All right. So now, from an inside guard, we're going to do our six. So everyone assume an inside guard. So remember, your wrists are going to be turned again. Good. All right. So on ready six, our attackers are going to disengage. They're going to try to cut around from left to right. Our defenders are simply going to take their hand and just going to drop, make a circle, and drop their wrist. You don't have to move. So don't don't move the whole arm. You want to keep the elbow low, and all you're doing is dropping the wrist, which is why this. Stretch is so important. Okay? So you want to keep this elbow up here. Like you want to mobilize it and you just drop it with the wrist just like that. Yeah. If you can't do it, you can, but this is something that is with exercise and practicing spell. Alright. Ready? Set. Very good. Oh, it worked. Nice. It worked. It worked. Yes. <laughs> Alright, last one. Good job. Alright. Ready. So yeah, from an outside guard, sorry. From an outside guard, yep. Alright. Now our attacker, this side now. Our attacker is just basically going to disengage over, straight cut, trying to split the head in half. Our defenders are not going to allow that. What they're going to do is they're going to bring their arm up to a hanging guard. And they're going to let that energy slip right off. All that big, powerful blow, but you got to make sure the hand is looking under the sword hand. Okay. Everyone got it? All right, from an outside guard. Ready? Seven. Very good. Very good. Just like that. Just like that. Just like that. So do that. Florida number, that's probably why. 